Hi guys, Patrick here from EngineeringShark.com and ElectronicLessons.com. This is how to make your own laser security system part 3. I know right now it looks like a mess, but if you haven't seen the first two videos, this might not make sense. I've been adding to it, like electronic bricks. Showing you piece by piece how it works, and then just adding it to it. If I made it in one big video, it would be a big pain to follow. So, I mean, this allows you, to, this, this allows you a break. So, uh, in our last video, what happened was we were messing with the pulse widths of the alarm. So, uh, to to give you a brief introduction, you've got your LDR circuit. There's actually a laser beam point at the LDR circuit. Comparator circuit, a 555 timer, um, monostable multivibrator circuit with a obviously variable pulse width, and now the relay driver circuit. Now, I've got a driver circuit there. The 555 timer output could drive a relay like this. It can output enough current to, but I figured I'd show you uh, a good way to drive relays. Now re these relays, as long as you have the wires thick enough, you can drive, you can switch on AC devices. In this case, I am going to be switching on a loud siren. Now right now our pulse width is 1.1 seconds, and I'm going to likely irritate everyone else nearby if I don't cover up the siren when it goes off. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on my device. Now my laser is actually coming from right here pointed at the circuit, can be from across the room, and uh, I'm going to give you a demonstration, and uh, I'm going to breach it, I'll put the, the relay is going to turn on, that LED will turn on for 1.1 1. 1. 1 seconds, and then it will turn it off. Uh, it may not sound extremely loud to you, but it is extremely loud here. Now, all of these components, you can find at Radio Shack. This, you'd have to find custom. They can be found at engineeringshock.com if you're interested. So, I'll show you the schematic in a minute. First, I'll give you a demonstration. So, I'm going to power it up. And as soon as I breach, breach the, uh, the, LDR, the laser to the LDR, the alarm is going to go off for 1.1 seconds. Are you ready? Now, I can make that go on for a heck of a lot longer. If you have a flip-flop, you, uh, you can make it latch so it latches on. Uh, these are all just hardware components. There's no software here. Anyone could build this based on Radio Shack components. So I'll do it again. So if I add a few more, like, uh, if I had a larger capacitor, timing capacitor on the 555 timer monostable circuit, uh, I could have that go on for 5 seconds, 10 seconds, 2 minutes, etc. Half a second, or I can, you know, I could put a flip-flop flip -flop and JK, JK can, um, configuration, and I can have it toggle. So, but that's another story altogether. I'm just showing you a, one of many, many ways you can build the circuit. So now let me talk about the uh, schematic. Last we were talking about our 555 timer circuit. Um, I'm not going to go back and re-explain all of the schematics. If you want to see all of the schematics and, and build with me, you know, you can build the whole circuit with me if you follow through these three videos. So, uh, what I've done is I, there's still a, the, the output of the 555 timer pin 3. There's the 470 ohm resistor tied to the LED, which is an indicator that the output has been triggered just a visual indicator and what I've done is I've, I've spliced off here to A now this is just merely just an indicator of where the signal is going so um, what I'm going to do is up here here is my relay circuit now you might remember way back in, in video 1 this is our 7805 5 volt regulated circuit but before then our 9 volts gets regulated we can pick off that we can splice up that 9 volt line and put it to a relay, but I'll get to that in a second. First, we'll talk about the driver circuit. Now, the driver circuit is a little bit hard to see. I realized that I could have made the uh, the schematic a bit neater. What you would need here are four components: a 2k ohm resistor, a two, uh, uh, an NPN transistor. In the case I used a uh, 2n222, two, 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 two. <laughs> uh, a shunt diode, which is very necessary, a 1n4001. It's a protective diode. I'll get to that in a second. And your relay. Now your relay, this is your relay coil, two pins, and then this is your relay uh, single pole double throw uh, outputs. So there's five pins on a relay. And uh, so the coil pin, how a relay works is if you energize the internal magnetic coil, then it pulls the contacts internally to create a switch. By default, when the relay is off, the common pin is connected to the normally closed pin. And when the, when the relay is activated, the common pin switches from the normally uh, normally closed pin to uh, the normally open pin. So in this case, I've put 9 volts 
on the on the common pin, and I've connected the normally open pin to the plus to 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 the uh, positive wire of the siren. I've connected the negative wi uh, wire of the siren to, gr to DC ground. So basically, when the uh, when the uh, when the um, when the relay switch is on. Uh, it completes the circuit, providing 9 volts all the way through the relay, through the siren to ground. But first, we have to energize our coil. It's got two pins. So, what we do is we used, we used a, a transistor switch earlier on in our 555 timer configuration, if you remember that. It works similarly. The signal coming from the 555 timer is fed through a protective 2K ohm resistor to the base of a transistor. Um, the collector of the transistor is connected to one of the two pins, it doesn't matter, of the, you know, one of the two coil pins of the relay. The emitter is connected to ground. When a positive pulse is, is applied through this 2K ohm resistor to the base, power is, goes from the collector through the base, in, I mean, through the base down through the emitter and completing the circuit. So, we've got 5 volts connected to the other side of the coil. So, when the transistor's off, that there's no power going through that coil. But when a pulse is sent through that transistor, the the, the power flows through the, the coil, energizing the coil, through the transistor to ground, so it's a complete circuit. Now, the, the, uh, the diode. Uh, if you don't know about diodes, my, my, uh, my uh, schematic symbol isn't all that great. It's basically a triangle with a, a line on the end. The line on the end is negative, and the base of the triangle is your positive. Now, by placing the, 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 the diode here, what happens is when an, a relay is turned on, uh, it creates a magnetic field. And when it's turned off, that magnetic field uh, collapses and it causes a spike of voltage. Uh, that same principle is actually used in voltage booster circuits. Now, that spike of voltage is higher than 5 volts, and if that carries through back through the circuit, it can hurt our microcontrollers. It can hurt our power supply, theoretically. So, you always want to put a diode in this configuration with a negative facing 5 volts or your power supply that's going to be powering the relay and your positive, your anode, connected to the uh, to either ground depending on your uh, your configuration but in this configuration if you have a dri transistor driver connect the positive to the uh, second pin of the relay in this case to the collector of the transistor now things got messy. I had to I had to bring uh, another breadboard into the equation, and because the relay does not have a fantastic pinout, uh, or rather a breadboard friendly pinout, uh, I just put some wires on and and connected things around. So here's my protective diode, my transistor, uh, my resistor down in here that that goes to the base of the transistor, and the 5 volt relay. And then I've got my siren, which is extremely loud connected as shown in, in the uh, schematic. Then of course I've got my 555 timer circuit and my uh, LDR circuit and comparator circuit. So comparator uh, and here's our LDR. Now you can put all of this onto a little printed circuit board. I've got a few uh, DIY electronics kits at engineeringshot.com and electroniclessons.com. I've got a very similar one of this, this coming. It's only about this big. Um, and it'll be available in stores and in our store in about two weeks. And yeah, so I hope you got something out of this. If you watch all three videos, I hope that I've uh, addressed ev everything. I hope I've been able to explain to you how it works, even on the most practical of levels. Um, I'm sorry for both the, the the state of the breadboard. I only have these neat little Arduino wires to connect things around. I know I could have made it a bit prettier, but I try to make things this as practical as possible. That aside. So, thanks for watching. If you have time, step by uh, our store at engineeringshock.com or electroniclessons.com, which will take you to our eBay store. Thanks, and I uh, hope you liked it. If you, if, uh, if you did, please comment. Take care, guys.